Okay, the right flank is looking better. The battle in the center is just about to begin, and I think I'm going to have the left flank covered. Ha, <laughs> good thing I sold Dave with that speed ring. Unfortunately, it doesn't really do much to help him double attack with fire spells. Don't know why they made them so heavy, because traditionally thunder is the one that's heavy. I think that makes a lot more sense. And I'm trying to see whether that will be too much. I think I could do this with just Aisle and mid if I have Sylvia dance for them. Now I think Lex needs to move over to the center. After he gets healed, of course. Which is why I like to put a healer over there. Always pays to plan things out in advance. Of course, I save my best healer for the center, because that's where the fighting is going to be the most intense. And right, you'll get to see the Libro staff here. Those of you who've played the Game Boy Advance games will know that the staff that pretty much has the same effect in those, um... Can't really pronounce its name, but... Yeah, it's immensely useful. Really, really, really useful. Basically works the same way as a normal healing staff, except, um... Over a range of, um... 10, or was it more? I think it's just 10. Ah, uh, spaces. It's great if um, an ally a bit further away is in serious trouble. And it means you also don't need to expose your healer to um, the uh, worst of an enemy attack, which is, again, another good advantage. Yeah, it's best to have magic users on this flank. They're always great for wiping out armoured units quickly. And now that's done, unfortunately we've got another problem on our hands. A somewhat larger problem. Which, I think we need every advantage we can get, so we're going to the woods. And forming a defensive position with behind Lachis and Sigurd. I don't want any of the, those archers to get to fury, but thankfully they probably won't. And even though these guys are lance users, unless you know Holland or Ira gets attacked by all of them at once, they'll probably be fine. Holding off been attacking just for a bit because I don't want him to get too badly damaged. Now hopefully this will be enough to... Right good, now he can run back into the woods. At least that's one down. Yeah, the trick to this section is you need to play defensively here. Don't try running out to the uh, enemy's castle until you've dealt with all these attacks. How amazing the difference Pursuit makes for her. Uh, now here come the cheap brigade guys thankfully you don't have to deal with any leadership bonuses here yes facing a very large amount of enemy troops with a uh, commander who has the leadership bonus is an absolute nightmare 
They couldn't possibly throw something like that at us in this chapter, could they? Attempting a bit of foreshadowing there. Those of you familiar with this game will know that something very, very bad is coming. One of the hardest moments in, um... Easily the hardest moments so far, and probably one of the hardest moments in the game overall. Although it's nothing compared to Chapter 9. Of course, they're still magnetically attracted to Holland. But that's fine unless he's on very low HP. And, uh, also speaking of Holland, if you're pairing Ira with either Lex or Holland, you know, either one of those people who did that conversation, chances are they will get paired in this chapter. In fact, it's almost certain they will. Right, now this is a problem. Now, I really hope their captain doesn't go and... Well, that's fine, because he uh, misses a lot with the javelin. Even though that village is getting damaged, you don't want to make a rush for it until you've dealt with the um, attacks. Doesn't really ma matter if the village has been 90% destroyed by the time you get there. Because one of those two villages on the side definitely does have an item. A pretty useful item, actually. One we really could have done with in the last chapter. A certain staff that would have really come in handy. And now I think Lex needs a bit more healing before he goes up there. Now I hope Midale is fast enough to double these guys. And he finally is. Right, now those armoured guys with axes make a perfect target for Beowulf's iron cutter. Now I don't think Lachesis is... Yep, yeah, no, no experience. She's too overleveled already, but... Yes, I am prioritising these archers because I don't want them um, running in, shooting at us, then retreating, because that gets very annoying, and they're also faster than the uh, armoured people, and if you're not careful, they actually might pose a threat to your castle, which you really don't want. Of course, the armors are never going to pose a threat to your castle. Yes, yeah, Sigurd's a bit stuck. I don't want him to go out there on his own. There. No, use the iron cutter. Actually, I didn't need to. But still, it's cool to see that animation. Yeah. Critical animations don't get to... Why is his speed so low? Uh, anyway, critical animations don't really get too amazing in this game, for the most part. Well, at least they're better than um, Fire Emblem 3, where they were mostly just um, the screen shaking a lot. <laughs> Another good thing about Libro is it gives a lot of experience. Anyway, yeah, most criticals in this game consist of a character twirling their weapon around. There are some pretty amazing ones, though. They're mostly by people on foot. I don't want to pass up this opportunity to... Almost, but not quite. At least there's only two of the archers left. 
And Lex has enough HP to go in there, I think. <coughs> As I was saying about critical animations, probably one of my favourites, I think, is um, Junior Lord. Although I think that's pretty much the same as Prince. Don't know. And I'm gonna end this part just by um getting Ethel some cheap experience. Which isn't actually going to affect much, seeing as she's going to be leaving at the end of this chapter, but... Still. <laughs>